I'm Barrett Caldwell. I am faculty in the human factors area of IE. Uh, how many of you are, fr uh, are from an undergraduate program where human factors was a primary emphasis or some sort of emphasis? Very few of you. Which, which means that for many of you, it's like, what is this human factors stuff? Uh, so I'm going to give you a really brief introduction to some of the work that I do uh, focusing on uh, a research area of basically uh, team performance and information coordination from the human side rather than from the algorithmic or um, uh, mathematics side and because I always have these cute quotes uh, I guess this is great for the for your beginning graduate school to say wisdom is not just something that you get in graduate school uh, but really it, it's not going to be a waste of your time uh, or I, at least I hope. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about uh, my research lab the emphasis uh, of this overview is not recruiting. It's just informational. Okay? So uh, if you don't have a background in a, in a program that has uh, human factors, you may not even know what the range of research uh, activities are. That's the emphasis today. So. Research in the Group Performance Environments uh, Research Lab, or Grouper, uh, is looking at information flow, knowledge sharing, and task coordination. So basically, how people get, share, and use information, not in the optimal sense, not in the rational decision maker sense, but in the real world task performance and, uh, and complex human systems integration perspective. We've done uh, projects that look at the effects of information and context without delay. You, you interrupt me more by asking permission. Just go. Uh, to, uh, to achieve that, we have to be able to study, analyze, and evaluate how people actually do these tasks in a variety of uh, real-world environments. So when I showed you the picture of the lab, we do stuff out, out in the world, not just in a usability uh, lab in, in here. So there's a number of areas that our work has been done. Uh, organization, general organizations, healthcare teams, uh, spaceflight operations. Let me give you a couple of partial example lists of some of our uh, research in aerospace. Uh, everything in our lab has an acronym. Part of the acronym emphasis was basically an organizational culture thing, partially because it, uh, just it, it, it can be humorous and memorable and have a serious underplay to it. Uh, all of our acronyms happen to be fish related or some sort of a, Aquatic related, not because I'm a fisherman, but just because that was that was the culture. Okay. So the the aerospace research area, uh, also known as Stingray, started out with privacy design requirements for the first generation of the International Space Station. This was one of my first projects in graduate school, and it's been something that we've continued to be interested in, looking at mission operations and basically how flight controllers communicate with each other and with the astronauts on board a space uh, vehicle using the voice uh, uh, communication channels, looking at uh, ground operations and concepts of operations uh, uh, at a launch facility, uh, looking at lunar concepts of op operations. So basically, if you were to do a long-duration uh, mission 
on the moon or Mars, how would you get that to work? And so we, we've been actually doing a, a variety of those sorts of studies uh, for assembly operations, flight control or anomaly resolution. Project that, we, that we're still finishing up is one looking at physiological monitoring and uh, task coordination between uh, astronauts on pretend. Well, some of them are real astronauts, but it's pretend Mars coordinating with a science operations team trying to design real-time scientific exploration of a geologically interesting environment. Our, our environments are so geologically interesting. One of them was in the uh, Kilauea volcanic zone that is now no longer available uh, because of the recent eruptions. Uh, But that, but that is basically how issues like time delay for, or very, very intensive engineering design requirements constrain how people could get and share information. There are other sorts of uh, uh, constraints associated with uh, basically li other sorts of life and death decisions that happen much more frequently, such as in healthcare. So some of the work that, that has been done in the healthcare area ha, has looked at uh, error processes in uh, healthcare radiation therapy. So team coordination between a treatment planner and an oncologist and the people who are running the radiation therapy machinery. Uh, uh, that's new, often a nuclear physicist or someone with advanced training in engineering physics or the behavior of a radiation source. That's something that we, that uh, a nuclear physicist got, uh, asked us to participate in uh, back in the early 90s and we continue to do some of that work. So we also have done projects looking at uh, hospital lab processes, pharmacy delivery, uh, outpatient processes, root cause analysis for healthcare delivery, uh, uh, in both inpatient and outpatient phenomena. Uh, one of my most recent uh, PhD students finished her work looking at traumatic brain injury detection and recovery pathways and how to uh, ensure improved individualized care for people recovering from uh, TBIs. Uh, one of my other uh, PhD students uh, currently uh, finishing up is looking at pharmacy delivery processes for uh, basically coordinating how pharmacists do both the dispensing activities, interacting with the doctors, but also interacting with the patients to provide more and better information to the patient about their use of the various medications that they're taking. And in many cases, the pharmacist has more of that coordination information than any particular doctor does, especially for patients that may see multiple uh, physician specialists who are not necessarily talking with each other, but they may have a single pharmacist. Like if, you're, if you've got multiple doctors on campus and you go to the pharmacy at a push, that's relatively straightforward. But if you then have specialists in multiple places or you're getting records from back home, that sort of coordination becomes a little bit more complicated. Uh, another uh, uh, research project that uh, started out in the healthcare uh, realm but is now sort of expanded is this idea of incident response and recovery, incident recovery for what uh, people now say uh, robust and resilient operations. And that might be everything from recovery from a natural disaster like a tropical storm or an earthquake or flooding all the way to uh, a response to a cyber attack. And so one of the questions there is how do teams of analysts recognize what's going on and respond effectively to that and how do end users like members of the public recognize that there is a, an adverse incident and uh, plan and execute effective recovery operations. 
I want to make sure that I click on that. Uh, maybe I didn't want to do that. Let me give you a couple of additional areas of emphasis. Uh, I, I'm originally a systems engineer by training, uh, an aerospace systems engineer. So uh, studying basically mission design for long duration space flight. Uh, on, the, on the space systems engineering side. As it turns out, as an undergraduate, I was in a program with a whole bunch of people who wanted to design space vehicles for long duration space flight, but didn't know that much about human behavior or performance. Think about it. I want to design a, an engineering system to do a particular job, but I don't know much about one of the major components that I'm designing the system for. It's kind of like building an airplane and not understanding aluminum, or trying to design a manufacturing facility and not having any idea of the uh, requirements for joining and cutting operations or even what material you would be doing it with. It's not very effective to think about effective systems design and integration. So that's where, where we uh, started, where, where I started working at the question of what are the systems and events that influence human performance? Well, these are actually broader questions about uh, engineering systems in general. And you should always ask these questions about any engineering system. What's the goal? What's the purpose? Understanding what the goal and purpose of the system is helps you understand what questions are going to be asked. And if you ask the question, what are the functions and processes that are important, you get closer to the answer of what does doing well mean? What's the nature of a good answer? And we often hear people say, well, we want to be optimized. Optimized on what criteria? There are some people who are willing to spend large amounts of money to gain a little bit extra safety. There are other organizations, there are other sectors where that, that extra level of safety may not be as important. Okay, So the other uh, questions about event descriptions will ask you questions about grain size. Basically, are you operating on the order of milliseconds or, or microseconds if you're worrying about a GPS operation all the way through minutes to hours if you are looking at long-term uh, operations planning where you're willing to let an algorithm run for a couple of hours in order to generate a Pareto frontier. Okay, What are the time scales and grain sizes of value and especially in the areas of detection and response, what can I know in advance and how does that influence my ability to sort of prejudge what I'm looking for so that I can make sense of the world faster? That is a fundamental aspect of how humans uh, process information. Okay? They have patterns. They respond to patterns. They look for things that match the patterns, whether or not that's actually true, but it's actually how we reduce the search space. So there's a lot of terminology that I could go into uh, of uh, systems engineering terminology that dates all the way back to Schuhart run charts, to Tom Sheridan's uh, study of uh, tele, uh, telerobotics and teleoperations, uh, stability, robustness, resilience, and control. As you notice, all of these are basically engineering definitions that have mathematical underpinnings to them. One of the questions would be, how do you develop the math, how do you develop the concept that is honest to the math and applicable to the human scale of task performance? Other, other approaches that some of you will recognize, 
a statistical process control approach, uh, looking at uh, contributors to variability. A cybernetic stability approach is saying, under what conditions can we uh, more or less guarantee good operations or stable operations, not just optimal op operations. And then the control and resilience, how well do we recover when system performance is no longer as good as we w might want it to be, or something bad happened to us, how do we deal with that? This is basically the process of people getting, sharing, and using expertise to solve problems in any sort of event uh, uh, context where you're looking at experts monitoring the system to detect anomalies and they go through what's called a fault de detection, isolation, and repair uh, or a recovery process. Mm -hmm.